Welcome to the last episode of the Engine Business Talk Show for the year. I'm your host, Catherine Cook, a leading business advisor and director of The Engine Limited. Today, we will discuss in today's competitive business landscape the role of professional experts, um, which cannot be overstated, particularly when it comes to shaping strategy. Professional experts bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table, enabling businesses to navigate complex challenges and capitalize on opportunities with precision. From seasoned industry veterans to specialized consultants, professionals possess insights and perspectives that can transform vague ideas into well-defined strategies. They have a deep understanding of market trends, consumer behavior, and emerging technologies, which are invaluable when crafting a roadmap for success. So whether you're a starter or looking to establish a foothold or a seasoned enterprise aiming to pivot and innovate, tapping into the expertise of professionals is key to not just surviving, but, thrive, but thriving in today's evolving business world. Today, I'm privileged to have providers to the engine, Corrette Lowell, Director of Walker Whale and Auckland Limited, and Andrew Skinner, Director of Ehrlich Mill Lawyers, join us to unravel the critical role of professional experts in shaping business strategy. We'll also touch upon their experiences working with the engine business advisors and exploring the collaborative efforts that drive success in the dynamic world of business. Saw you waving there, Andrew. Good morning to you both. Morning. Good morning, Catherine. Morning, Andrew. So, um, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people see our age here, right? And they'll be saying, are they the veterans or the experts? So I think we're probably a bit of both, right? <laughs> <laughs> they like the word veteran. <laughs> <laughs> We've got tall stories and war stories, uh, but uh, we close our war chest uh, more often than we open it. Um, but uh, let's get right into this. So, look, as we explore the intricate dance between professionals and strategic advisors in the business arena, Corit Lal and Andrew Skinner have generously offered their time to provide insights today. The collaborate, collaboration between their firms, Walker Whale and Auckland Limited, and Ehrlich Mill Lawyers, as providers working alongside the engine business advisors, adds a layer of synergy that transforms businesses. Let's explore some tangible scenarios and experiences these experts have encountered in their journey, shedding light on the dynamic interplay of accounting, legal acumen, and strategic advisory, offering a roadmap for businesses aiming not just to survive, but thrive. Let's kick things off by diving into real-world examples. Karit, could you share a specific instance where Walker Whale in Auckland, in collaboration with the engine business advisors, played a pivotal role in strategically steering a company towards success? Yeah, sure, Catherine. I mean, we've done many things together. Um, one that springs up in my mind at the moment is, is the couple who actually were in the business for so many years. The guy actually turned 80, celebrated his 80th birthday at Yuhala Lee Estate. You know, the lady was not that far behind and they were still working in the business. They had not dressed up the business for a sale. They didn't know which direction to go to. Um, you know, we actually got together. We actually helped them get their finances under order. We helped them to actually get their business processes under order. You know, with uh, our total collaboration, we managed to uh, get them a sale, which was over the valuation that the business broker actually had valued the business at. So the ultimate outcome for them was a real big win. And that wouldn't have happened without our teamwork, you know. And uh, I would say that's only just is a sim simple example of how succession planning or when somebody actually has got something in mind and they want to execute, how our expertise could help them uh, achieve their end goals. That was a really, really big one, you're right. And, you know, like how many 80-year-old work as hard as that and are then able to reap the value of their hard fruit? So mm -hmm. building the value proposition is so important um, before you actually get that business on the market. And a lot of people leave it too late. And then suddenly realize that uh, they are having to sell it distressed or um, in actual fact, there's nothing to sell. So that's a really good example. Great way to kick off the morning, career. So Andrew, as a commercial lawyer and partner with Ehrlich Milne, your expertise is crucial in navigating legal complexities. Can you shed light on how legal considerations, especially those provided by Ehrlich Milne lawyers and the engine business advisors, could contribute to the broader strategic vision of a business? Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I've got a, a background. Um, obviously, I'm a lawyer with Ehrlich Mill. Previously, I've been in house with some big corporates. And so I've been involved in sort of many strategy sessions, both sort of in-house and at the clients now. 
Um, and I guess what we bring is that independent view on, um, on a strategy. Um, we deal with a lot of businesses and a lot of industries, so we can see trends that are going on and we can kind of um, be that voice that sort of sits back from there um, very deep in their business and say, hey, does this actually make sense and, and where's the strategy going? Um, and from a legal perspective, particularly, I guess we're focused on on the risk of, um, of of what's being proposed. Say, if there was a new, for example, marketing strategy or pricing strategy, sort of how does that look, and how do, how do we make sure that's lawful under the different laws you need to consider for that? So it's kind of both those sort of facets. I love I love all of that, um, Andrew, because when I'm talking to you, you're not just and and Corinne as well, not just looking at your expertise area, it's the whole holistic broader viewpoint and it has to be taken into consideration because if you do things in isolation, you end up with that whole point solution. I also have to say it's really interesting and exciting how you're able to strategically sit on that hill, Andrew, with the sky tower behind you. Um, so really impressed with the, uh, the view behind you. We'll just think that you're sitting on the hill. Um, but uh, Years of practice, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we might have to do a bit of a bit of yen or yoga at the top of that hill together and see if we can still be strategically collaborating or falling over. Um, but anyway, look, staying. Thank you for that, Andrew. Staying current with industry trends is key. Kurit, how has your collaboration with the engine business advisors enhanced your ability as accountant to stay ahead of the curve and provide strategic insight to your client or theirs? Uh, our collaboration with the engine business advisors has been very instrumental in uh, keeping us in the forefront of the industry trends. Um, you know, through regular strategic sessions, we exchange insights. We actually go through all of the different things that are there, like emerging technologies, what the market shifts have been, you know, what's ev evolving with the uh, consumer behaviors out there. So it's trying to keep current with everything that is out there and it's good to have the right people around you because you are talking to them to get to the solution that you could then give to your clients and then you know with our mutual clients it's a win-win because they get all the different uh, angles and the different uh, experiences that we all bring to the table you know for example in a recent instance we discussed the impact of the blockchain in financial reporting yeah, and that's allowing Walker Wallen to proactively advise clients in adopting technologies uh, that are not only not only the day assure compliance, but you know it's it's technically the next stage, the innovators and the respective industry. So you know we're we're not actually just sitting idle; we are always innovating with time, and uh, you know having the engine alongside us, it's actually fantastic and the, and the business advices. I love our innovation of getting you both on podcasts as well. It's been visible now. We now know who Kurit Lowell and Andrew Skinner are instead of being behind their desk they're now in front of the whole of New Zealand. So um, it's, I think we've achieved a really good result there. Um, the Engine's unique provider community means we have specialist experts we can rely on to provide our clients with credible, proven resources. The combined expertise of a business advisor, a lawyer, and accountant can provide a robust support system for your business, covering strategic, legal, and financial aspects to promote overall success and sustainability. By creating the Engine Limited, which was a, a real strong vision of mine with a credible provider community, I was realising a goal I had when I was the business advisor at the Auckland Chamber of Commerce in 2015 to provide comprehensive expertise ongoing rather than just when the problem happened to support. Usually when it's a major problem, they need to have that ongoing. So coming back to you, Andrew, for businesses considering professional guidance, how does the Engine Business Advisors approach complement legal expertise, ensuring a holistic strategy that aligns with both legal and business considerations? Yeah, well, I, I look, I think that's the real um, the real strength of the engine business community is that most um, issues that businesses are facing aren't just solely a legal issue or solely a strategic issue or solely an accounting issue. Um, typically, you'll go in there first and you'll get into the business and you'll see things and then you'll pull us in um, as needed. And there's a lot of trust between the business, the engine providers, and we're very happy to speak with each other and, and really help that business out sort of holistically as you say um, so I think businesses um, can benefit from knowing that they're coming to a package of providers and that there'll be nothing slipping through the cracks whereas sometimes it can be a little disjointed if they're speaking to one professional they know and then someone else and we, we really know each other we know how each other ticks and we really come together as a package well. 
Yeah, and I, and I like what you're saying there because typically speaking, and, and I've been in the same shoes, I'll get to a lawyer and, and I want to tell you the whole book and uh, and then I don't want you to charge me for the whole book, but you're going to need to charge me for the whole book because that's what I want to tell you. So it, cutting through the emotion and getting to the core heart of, of what the real problems are. So um, I love the way that we're able to have the expertise to be able to do that um, and have those courageous conversations. So we just bring the core issues at heart to you so you can deal with them um, effectively. So um, thank you for that, Andrew. So, um, you know, obviously collaborating with a business advisor while also receiving external support from a lawyer and accountant can offer a lot of benefits for your business. The Engine Limited Business Advisors provide strategic guidance, help with business planning, and offer insights into industry trends. Talking about holistic, we do that holistic view to your business and can assist in areas such as marketing, operations, and overall growth strategy, while also understanding fiscal management, structure, leadership, and compliance. However, as advisors, we're not the lawyers and we're not the accountants. Even though we get them trying to get us to do that work, we just do not do that. We have professional liability as well. We're just not allowed to do that. So we're, I'm, even when we're engaged as consultants, albeit in some instances, um, we cannot do that work. So we need to bring about the, the expertise of Corrupt and Andrew. We do also work with businesses as co-pilot CEOs when the company owners have lost their passion um, or are just absolutely tired and managing their interim leadership function is so crucial. So we need the expertise of our providers because we can't do it all. And we call this part the implementation piece, the specialist piece. So Andrew, what comprehensive expertise can Ehrlich Milne provide? Yes, well, um, at Ehrlich Milne, we really focus on the three key areas, I guess, which is myself, which is the, the business sort of law and business um, uh, arrangements, business-focused advice. I've got another partner that really focuses on property transactions, and um, we also do a lot of private client work. So we sort of see those as the three key areas that often kind of link to each other and, and kind of feed into the issues that we're dealing with. So um, my particular business piece, I do a lot of work around commercial contracts, a lot of business transactions, a lot of sale and purchase agreements, um, advise on intellectual property matters. So um, really, um, most things that a business will face, we will have covered before, uh, we'll have experience in them uh, and expertise to deal with them. And I love the fact that all three of us are really passionate around governance as well and really look at that prevention over the cure and putting uh, best practices in place. So hopefully that wasn't what you were going to talk about, correct? Because I'm going to ask you what comprehensive <laughs> expertise can walk away and provide. If I stole your stole your thunder. You've stolen some of my thunder. <laughs> you know, but to, together with that, I mean we you know, we've actually been on boards together and and you know, and done things. But uh, for us, Wukawalan is more on the financial side of things, the financial health, maintaining uh, uh, compliance, you know, with the tax department, with the company's office, for, for the companies out there, you know, for the individuals who are trying to make sure that they are actually achieving their goals in life uh, financially, you know, where they want to be. Obviously, life throws a number of challenges along the way. You know, are you actually ready for those challenges? Do you have enough reserves? So it's the financial health of, of the business and then leading on to the individuals. And we look after everything underneath the accounting and tax umbrella for that and just ensuring that uh, clients can actually move forward. So things like cash flow planning, budgeting, uh, you know, helping with uh, annual financial statements, tax returns, trying to ensure that uh, you know, we have actually got the uh, governance in place, succession planning from a financial perspective, all of those things are where we would actually have the expertise to uh, collaborate with the business uh, advisors and the community of the engine to get to a solution for the client. Yeah, what I really love about Walker Wayland also is I'm, I'm really um, a promoter of the three-way cash flow because people do that cash flow forecast, but they don't bring the balance sheet in to that three-way cash flow, which you do, and you do it really, really well. So, um, yeah, big shout out to Walker Wayland. They're not just the end-of-year accounts people. They, they really get involved in the business and understand uh, the intricate detail. But again... It reservations from people and paying for accountants and lawyers uh, only when they need it when they're at the bottom of the cliff and so uh, there will always be those people um, and at the end of the day I just caution you to think about whether it's better at the bottom of the cliff 
or at the top and far away. So coming back to the collaborative efforts of a business advisor, lawyer and accountant in the lead up to risk mitigation, um, which creates uh, a multifaceted strategy uh, that addresses from a strategic, legal and financial perspective, fostering a resilient and adaptive business environment is so crucial. The engine as business advisors look at strategic planning for risk identification, where we play a pivotal role in strategic planning, assessing the business landscape and identifying potential risk. This involves a thorough analysis of industry trends, competitive pressures and external factors that may impact the business adversely. We then move into contingency planning and then look at adaptive strategies. Correct, can you tell the listeners how Walker Whalen assists collaboratively with the engine business advisors and their clients in terms of risk management? Yeah, sure, Catherine. Uh, let's start with financial record keeping for risk assessment. So when you think about it, a lot of businesses, you know, they, they conduct their day-to-day -day stuff. They're not over there uh, keeping their financial records in the way that they should do. They actually rely on the EN accounts to come through, which is going to tell them their financial health. But those days are over where you can't actually know the financial health of your business and your own financial well-being. Um, because with things like zero and everything else, you've got information right at your fingertips and you would want to make sure that you are up to date with all of those uh, compliance matters so that you could actually identify the risk that are coming to your business. You know, what are, what are the sort of things that you need to actually think about? Are you meeting sales to budget? Uh, is your profitability in line with uh, budgets? Now, you know, we talk about budgets and cash flow planning, the three-way cash flow model. It's so important that it is actually done at the commencement of every financial year, and then it is measured against that. And then you actually have what they call the rolling budget. It's quite important because as circumstances change, you need to adopt to it and make sure that you know, your business is evolving. And then you need to make sure that if you are on a growth phase and if you are wanting to go ahead and invest some of that capital, that you've got the insights to the financial risk of investing that capital. I mean, I had a client in just yesterday, you know, he's going in and investing machinery uh, for another client that he hires out to, but he's got no contracts with that client. So, you know, he could actually go off and buy a $250,000 machinery tomorrow and say that, yep, this guy's actually going to use it. But then in three months' time, if he comes back to say, yeah, thank you very much, he hasn't actually got the payback on the machine yet. Yeah, and he doesn't have a contract. There's no minimum terms. So, you know, risk assessment, uh, looking at where they are at, is it worth the investment? You know, would you actually say goodbye to a client that is not wanting to sign a contract? Is that you know, so uh, so much is within your total scope of the business, you know, because if a client cannot commit to it, then, you know, are you really investing good dollars behind bad dollars over here? So it's that sort of stuff. And uh, together, you know, we've done things with, um, with other clients where we have looked at their risk and tried to say, okay, these are the things that you need to do straight away. And these are the things that you could actually do in the future. So together with that and cash flow planning and that, it's it's quite important that businesses do look at it on a regular basis. So we could help in all of these areas together. Look, I'm, I'm finding a, a lot of issues at the moment around, um, you know, profit margins not being understood and uh, and timing of how to do things not being understood. So people are stretching the um, the time to do things out because it's not so busy. But in actual fact, that all that doing is reducing the profit margins because wages then become more, and and we've got to get those get those overheads under control. So. Andrew, let's look at some collaborative efforts uh, that you, as a as a lawyer, uh, would look at in terms of risk management. Yeah, so um, probably the most important thing we've been doing a lot of recently uh, is developing or giving input into risk registers for companies, um, and and some of the the boards I'm on as well. We're spending a bit of time on that. So uh, similar to what um, Kurt is talking about. Um, it's a matter of sitting down and, and thinking about, from a legal perspective, the different risks in your business and then tracking those through and understanding how do you sort of mitigate or put plans in place to, um, to mitigate those risks. So, for example, um, an obvious one that we always do a lot of is just actually putting in place terms of trade for clients, okay, because there's still a lot of businesses out there that don't have that. And when they stop and think about their risks and they develop a register and say, right, risk of non-payment, 
um, oh, you know, we always get paid eventually or whatever, but what's actually behind that? Oh, we don't actually have a decent set of terms. Um, we don't have a personal guarantee behind that. We don't have um, security on the personal property securities register. All those things you can do, which just really help you, um, you know, mitigate that risk in your business. That's just one example. But it's a matter of, and you don't sit down forever and write 100, you know, risks. It's, it's sort of focusing on your key ones, you know, what are the ones that are really going to affect your business? And then, well, what do we have in place to really try and mitigate those? That's really where we can add value. Yeah, look, the terms of trade is an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, you know, we sign terms of trade with our lawyers and uh, sorry, our leases in terms of doing personal guarantees. That's like a terms of trade for your rents, but you're not mitigating it against the inflow of cash that you need yeah. in times yeah. around it. So um, there's no money in my bank account because I didn't get paid. Um, I can't therefore pay my lease, but I can't go back to the person because they pay as, as and when they want to because Nothing says I've got, got to pay on. Tell them when to, yeah, force them to, yeah, that's right. And so I've got nothing to fall back on. So always fall back on those agreements and the importance of them and uh, that investment up front of getting that sorted is going to pay dividends. Um, so look to both of you, Kurt and Andrew. We we enjoy working and collaborating collaborating with you both and your team as provided to the engine. Correct. Can you share insights into how this collaboration has evolved for you and the unique value it brings to businesses seeking comprehensive approach to strategy development? Yeah, sure. Um, our collaboration with the business uh, advisors at the engine has evolved, um, and it's it's quite a dynamic partnership. I mean, we are uh, all beyond our individual expertise. We are picking on each other's brains. You know, we can pick up the phone and talk to each other. We have regular catch-ups. Uh, we're having one again tomorrow, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, and the uh, cross-discipline. I mean, we brainstorm ideas. We actually try and add value for our clients. Um, yeah, it just creates a synergy that transforms into strategic uh, development for our clients. You know, when we recently actually co-created that comprehensive growth strategy for a client, if you remember, uh, where my accounting financial insights and uh, Andrew's legal considerations and your Catherine, the engine strategic vision, all resulted in a well-rounded roadmap for success for the client. So, yeah, that's that sort of collaboration always is happening within the engine business advisors, and that, that actually creates value for the client. Great work, great, great work. Um, Andrew, what about you? What what have you got? Have you got any words around the collaborative relationship that we have? I mean, we've known each other for quite a number of years now. Yeah, and, and I think that that itself um, is quite a benefit because you build up that level of trust in terms of everyone's expertise. Um, you can, as Kurt says, pick up the phone and get an answer that you know is right straight away. Um, and we can pick up issues when we're dealing with a client and say, right, I think that that might be an accounting issue, that might be a sort of marketing strategy issue. I think you need to talk to so-and-so, uh, you know, and, and, and deal with that. Um, think of that particular client we had earlier this year where um, you sort of identified they needed a shareholders agreement um, um, early on, um, which they absolutely did, uh, given the nature of the ownership. And, you know, we were able to put something in place pretty quickly that gives them a real decision making roadmap and how they can run their business. So um, which will be a benefit for them going forward. Yeah, and I still remember that time of trying to get us out of a shareholding agreement with two people who've been trying to unlock themselves for six years, and we did it in three months. So um, well done us, Andrew. So um, the number of business insolvencies are increasing. In my professional opinion, if a business is struggling and engaging a business advisor, accountant and lawyer becomes extremely critical um, to survive those challenges. A business advisor can assess the overall strategic direction and identify operational efficiencies and develop turnaround strategy. Corrit, in your opinion, when should a struggling business consider engaging a business advisor, accountant and lawyer to ensure its best chance for survival and what specific benefits do these professionals bring to the table? Yeah, sure. Uh, Catherine, timing is everything, isn't it? Um, so as you've always said, you know, rather than the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, you'd rather be on the top. And, uh, you know, it's critical that you have professionals aligned and involved in any business turnaround strategy. So, you know, I know we talk often, Catherine, about the need to actually have your accountant involved throughout the year with regular strategic conversations around fiscal management, however, working alongside a business advisor who is holistically across the business is so valuable and, you know, and he's working with a lawyer to mitigate the risk uh, 
Yeah, at Walker Wallen, we contribute uh, to analyzing the financial health, managing cash flow, do the three-way cash flow models, uh, implement cost-saving measures to stabilize their financial foundation. Yeah, similarly, uh, Andrew and the team have been good at navigating all the legal complexities, assisting in debt restructuring, shareholder agreements, provide crucial support in negotiations uh, against potential legal disputes. So this is all collaborative uh, teamwork and the approach it shows that you know, we as a team can provide a comprehensive and well-coordinated effort to address these strategic financial and legal aspects, providing yeah. the struggling businesses with the best chance of survival and uh, eventual recovery. Yeah, look, as usual, we're running close to the wire on this 30 minutes, and I know you guys run on the half an hour spot, so I'm going to have to pick what we what we cover off. But I want to talk about um, a report that Radio New Zealand uh, reported on the 1st of November, um, and they warned New Zealand must prepare for low, long COVID implications. That study also surveyed the symptoms that were with those long COVID experiences that were going to have the impact. Um, individuals are already reporting experiences of fatigue, brain fog, lots of concentration. And this is actually also flowing through to the business owners who have not been able to take breaks from their business and lack the resources to be able to step away. The engine offers an interim CEO co-pilot service where we step in from as little as half a day a week uh, or even full weeks uh, to go in and become that leadership team. Uh, more often or not, um, on the business owners' return, we're also retained ongoing. However, it's important for us to collaborate with legal and financial professionals to develop a comprehensive strategy. We can't do it just on our own. Just staying with you, Corinne, how does an accountant contribute to addressing the business stagnation caused by fatigue and mental unwellness and what financial strategies can be implemented to support employees and employees' well-being while maintaining business viability? Yeah, as accountants, we address uh, business stagnation stagnation due to fatigue and mental uh, unwellness by integrating the financial strategies that prioritize the owner and the employee well-being. Uh, it's very, very important that it does happen. Um, and this could all go through involving budgeting for wellness programs, assessing the financial impact of absenteeism, providing insights into the cost effectiveness of mental health initiatives. All of these things, collaborating with a business advisor, we as accountants, we ensure that the financial decisions align with strategic goals, supporting employee wellness while maintaining the business's financial viability. Very, very important. So back to you, Andrew, how do you assist in addressing the impact of fatigue and mental unwellness on business um, stagnation, ensuring legal compliance and offering support to mitigate further potential legal risk? Well, as as, as a business that um, just had another COVID outbreak, <laughs> it's certainly still around us, isn't it? Yes. And um, I had it a couple of weeks ago and it went through half of our office. Um, so it, it's still a very live issue. And you're right, people... Um, uh, are fatigued, um, I think, and, and there is a, just a general sort of a bit of tiredness out there. So um, I guess where we can help is with um, policies um, that the business may need to deal with um, those sorts of issues, um, you know, giving people time, working from home, giving them um, avenues to kind of have things outside the office that um, that can kind of refresh with. I think I love the idea, you know, that the, the, the interim CEO, you know, as business owners, it's hard to get away. It's especially hard to get away nowadays when, you know, with all the access that we have to our, our business. So um, having someone like you come in on a temporary basis to give someone that break, um, that, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, we can sort of um, be involved from an employment perspective with employees, but it's thinking about the wider, wider needs as well. Yeah, and to be honest, a lot of business owners go in without a skill set of being leaders, so it's really important that they step aside out of their own way and go and get that capability where we can come in also and be that business as usual. Um, yep. and, um, I want to kind of round off, I know we're out of time, but one thing that's really important for all of our point of view is exit planning is a critical phase for businesses. It often involves complex financial, legal and strategic considerations. Corit, can I get a final viewpoint from you on how does the collaboration between a business advisor and accountant, sorry, business advisor, accountant and lawyer play a pivotal role in ensuring a smooth and successful exit for a business? Just a really quick roundup on that. Yeah, sure. I mean, as I said right at the beginning with the case that we worked on about um, I, uh, the couple who were actually wanting to exit out of their business but didn't have a plan and we actually put it together. I mean, that 
and that whole thing wouldn't have happened without the right business advisors around them. So the lawyer, the accountant, yourself as the strategic uh, uh, direction advisor, you know, all of those things are very important. You know, we had the HR, Lisa from uh, our team, et cetera, all helping out to ensure that we do get to the end outcome. So yeah, without collaboration, you can't get to a successful result in business. And Andrew, what, oh, thank you, Kurt. What's one tip you want to give businesses now to prepare for 2024? Oh, I was really ready to talk about exit planning. I just gave it speak. I just gave a talk on exit planning at a conference. How can you do that to me? <laughs> you can talk about exit planning in your final tip. Well, hey, I'll do, do my top tip on exit planning. So um, if you are thinking about um, what is the next move, then um, yeah, the top tip is um, make an exit plan. That's that's really the idea. Is is think about you know what who who are your likely people you're going to sell to? Getting your business affairs in order, making that plan earlier so that you don't just wake up one day in a depressed market and say, oh God, I've got to sell. Um, it, it's a it's a two to five year process, you know, exiting your business. So start thinking on the sum, on the beach this summer on your towel. <laughs> I'll stay with you, Andrew. What's your final, final tip for 2024? Look after your staff. They're your, they're your key people in your business. Um, keep an eye on them, remunerate them well. And, and you know, staff leaving is a massive impact on a business. So keep in touch with them and look after them. Thanks, Andrew. And one final tip from you for 2024. Correct. Um. I agree with Andrew, looking after your staff, but also look after your cash because there's going to be an increased cost of living. All of the fixed interest rates are coming up uh, for renewal. The cost of mortgages are going to go up. Uh, plan well for your cash. It's not just cash in your business, but cash in your individual lives. The business doesn't have an unlimited supply of cash. It only generates a bit. You need to make sure that your financial well-being is well looked after that uh, means because uh, if you don't plan for cash, uh, getting cash in a rush is proving to be very hard for businesses. So cash flow planning, my, very important. Yeah. And my, sorry, I cut you short there, Karel. I thought you were yeah. cool You, thing, tell um, us your hot tip. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear your hot tip. Your hot, yeah. My final tip is um, look after you. Look after you as a business owner because if you're not healthy, then your business won't be healthy. You won't be able to think straight. You won't be able to make sane decisions. And Without a healthy and um, visionary leader at the helm, which I'm seeing in a lot of businesses, they're struggling with not having that leadership. They're rudderless. There really is nothing else that, that can operate in that business. You'll just have leads and, and lots of other things. That it's a bit of a domino effect. So make sure that you're well and step out of your way if you're not well and get the right resources around you because you don't want to have a situation that then involves in something else. So um, I think we're, we're all three on the same page in terms of um, business and, and understanding what's required. I think 2024 is going to also be a very difficult year, but it's also going to be a very exciting year. Uh, exciting that if we can make sure that we get rested and look after what we've got like it's an egg, without dropping that, um, then uh, we will um, obviously be able to move forward. So thank you both uh, for your insights um, and wisdom today. It's always great talking to you. And Andrew, just for you, I'll kick off the new year with a whole session around exit planning. How about that? Um, just so you don't feel like you've, uh, you've been short shorter today. But um, hey, look, thank you everybody for watching. You can continue to watch our podcast um, on Apple, Spotify, or Google. Um, understand that as professional advisors and strategic partners, we're here to work in your best interest. We love working with our providers, Walker Whalen, Ehrlich Moon, um, and we look forward to that continued involvement and that continued commitment towards businesses for the coming uh, year. That's a wrap for us this year. Use this time now to organise your strategic session um, and reach out to either Andrew Corrett or any one of us at uh, the Engine and the Engine's community. Um, and uh, see you in 2024.